Hi guys, welcome back to In Case of Econ Struggles. Welcome to another math struggle. Today is part two of the Lagrangian Optimization and Economics mini-series. In the last video, I touched very briefly about lambda star. I called it the shadow price of wealth, which is very specific to the utility maximization context. And so I wanna talk more about that today. So what I want you to get out of this video, first we're gonna review how you can calculate lambda star in any constrained optimization problem when you use Lagrangian. But really, I want to talk about how we're going to interpret lambda star in the utility maximization problem context. Specifically, I want you to be able to explain why it's often positive and exactly what it means to be able to interpret that number once you get it. So the first thing that I want to do is I just want to talk intuitively about lambda star and why it's the shadow price of wealth or why it's the change in the objective function when you relax the constraint a little bit. And so remember in the utility maximization problem, what's going on at a very basic level for utility maximization, so we've got some person, we'll call him Bill. Bill's gonna go into the store and Bill's trying to figure out what to put in his cart when he goes to the store. And of course, Bill is trying to maximize his happiness in terms of the cart that he walks out of, but he only has a limited budget. He's only got 20 bucks. So if Bill is walking in with $20, he's gonna do that utility maximization problem and he's gonna choose an optimal cart. And what this lambda star is gonna tell us is, well, what if instead of $20, Bill walked into the store with $21? And because we're giving Bill an extra dollar, we're sort of relaxing his constraint because the ceiling or the limit of carts that Bill can buy is based on this $20. And so if we give him an extra dollar, that's gonna give Bill more options in terms of the cart that he can buy at this store. And if we're giving Bill more options in terms of the things that he can buy, then that's relaxing the constraint. So again, in the utility context, we're talking about a budget constraint, and so relaxing the constraint is like giving Bill an extra dollar. But if you're trying to generalize this video to other types of constraint optimization, we're thinking about what does it mean to relax the constraint, and how does the person's objective function change as we relax that constraint a little bit? And the answer to this question is, of course, lambda star. That's why we're talking about it and we call lambda star a bunch of different things in terms of constrained optimization problems. It's the shadow price of wealth in the utility maximization context. You might also call it the benefit of Bill having an extra dollar in his budget because really it's the benefit of relaxing the constraint. How much does my objective function change? How much does my utility go up? If I relax the constraint, if I have an extra dollar in my wallet when I walk into the store. So now that we have this idea, I wanna sort of present two examples. And the first example I'm going to go through very quickly because the first example is going to be sort of vague. And the reason this first example is going to be sort of vague is because this is based on Cobb Douglas utility because I want you to have seen these expressions at least once. We sort of did them when we talked about utility maximization problems with Lagrangians. I'm going to go over it again just to show you this big old mess for lambda star. And again, I just want you to have seen that once and we're just going to show that lambda star is positive. And then the second example is one I really want you to focus on because we're gonna go through the math a little slower, a little bit more in depth. And I think that's really gonna tie it all together. So I'm gonna show you this. Feel free to skip ahead to the second example if this is not generally something you're encountering. But just very briefly, if this is my utility function subject to my budget constraint, then I'm gonna set up the Lagrangian, which is my objective function plus lambda times my constraint set equal to zero. I'm gonna take some first order conditions. It's gonna look like a mess gonna divide them, and I'm gonna get that y star is alpha over beta times px over py. I'm gonna use my budget constraint, gonna get x star and y star, and we showed this shortcut with Cobb Douglas utility before. But if I go back to my first order condition, you can see that say I take this blue first order condition right here, this says that lambda star is alpha over px, x alpha minus one, y to the beta, and again, it's first order condition, so this is an x star and this is a y star. So once I have x star and y star, I can plug those into this expression. Of course, I could have done the same thing with the pink first order condition that I have below. I'm gonna get the same answer, it doesn't matter. So when you're choosing which one to use for lambda star, pick whatever one's easiest, whichever one you're more confident in. And if I plug my x star and my y star into that lambda, I'm gonna get this gigantic expression right here. And I'm not going to try to simplify this anymore because all I'm trying to show is this is positive. And the reason this is positive makes a lot of intuitive sense because if you give Bill an extra dollar, his utility should go up if he's spending all his money because Bill generally likes more stuff. 
And so with more dollars, he can buy more stuff. And with more stuff, Bill's utility goes up. And so if Bill's utility is going up, when his constraint gets relaxed a little bit, his lambda star should be positive. So that's sort of the vague hand wavy definition that you might see in class or in a lecture or in a textbook. And now let's do a more concrete example, which may really help tie this all together. So maybe I'll call this UMP example two, where I've got a utility that looks very similar to a problem that we did in the last video, where maybe there's two goods. And so my utility is X1, X2 plus two X2. Maybe my budget is $30. The price of X2 is one and the price of X1 is two. And so if I just start going through the math, here's my Lagrangian. Again, if you're a little confused how to set that up, see the previous video or part one of this series. But here are my two first order conditions. I'm gonna solve for x1 star as a function of x2 star. I'm gonna plug that into my constraint. And then what I'm going to get is I'm going to get that x1 star is equal to eight, x2 star is equal to 14. Well, the second first order condition says that x1 star is equal to lambda star. So lambda star must be equal to eight. And my utility, when I plug in my optimal x1 and my optimal x2, comes out to be 128. So now we've said before that this is positive, which means that if I give Bill an extra dollar, his utility should go up. And specifically, it sort of says that for every dollar I give Bill, his utility should go up by about eight. And so let's just test that. Let's just take this budget constraint where we said we had $30, and maybe we can increase it to $31 and see what happens to Bill's utility. Now, when we go from 30 to 31, notice I've got a lot of even numbers. I don't really wanna deal with fractions, to be honest with you. So what I'm gonna do, instead of increasing Bill's budget constraint by $1, I'm gonna increase it by $2 to $32, just so the math is a little easier and we're not throwing around like halves. But you could have done it with 31. You should get the same sort of idea. If you try that on your own and you don't get it, feel free to leave a comment below asking for an explanation. Let's see if this makes sense. And so now I don't need to figure out lambda star. And so since I don't need to figure out lambda star, I'm just gonna use the fun substitution method that again, we covered in the last video. Feel free to check that out. But what I'm basically gonna do is solve this for X2 and just plug it into my utility function. That way this becomes a function of one variable or X1. So I'm just gonna collect some terms I'm gonna take one first order condition, tells me that x1 star is equal to eight and x2 star is equal to 16. So notice that if I gave Bill an extra $2, he used those extra $2 to buy two more x2 and we went from 14 x2 to 16 x2. But more importantly, we went from a utility star or an optimal utility of 128 and now we have an optimal utility of 144. And remember we said that lambda star was equal to eight. So if we take this 144, we subtract the 128 and we divide it by the fact that I increased Bill's budget by two, that's a difference of 16 over two, which is exactly equal to eight. So our Lambda star told us that if we increase the budget by $2, we should increase our utility by 16. And lo and behold, that's exactly what happened. And so this is really showing you that lambda star is indeed telling us how much our utility would increase, how much our objective function would change when we relax the constraint a little bit, when we gave Bill an extra dollar. Now, the reason this works sort of graphically is if we think about our utility on the y-axis and the amount of money or the budget on the x-axis, at first we had a budget of $30. And when we had a budget of $30, we had a utility level of 128. And maybe this is what our utility looks like for any given budget. And so when we increased our budget 32, we were able to go to 144. And if we connected these two points, this slope would be eight, which is our lambda star. Now really slope is calculated sort of at each point specifically. So we've got a lambda star here and we've got a lambda star here. But basically if this utility function is linear enough, then we've approximated it with lambda star is equal to eight. That was confusing, don't really worry about it. What I want you to understand is that lambda star tells us how much our utility goes up when we change our budget, or it's basically some sort of function of du star dw, which is what we call the shadow price of wealth, which is what we call lambda star. And so what I really hope this does for you is just clear up what lambda star is, what the shadow price of wealth is, and make it easier for you to understand and remember. 
and also interpret when you get different numbers and different constrained optimization problems. But if this was helpful, please like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time for another case of Econ Struggles.